So we've talked a lot about the um, procoagulant factors in uh, in hemostasis, but as I mentioned right at the start now, it's 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 not a a one-way process. It's a, it's a very fine balance between procoagulants and anticoagulants. So I'm now going to turn turn our attention to the to the anticoagulants, the anticoagulant part of that. This size is just as important as the as the procoagulants in terms of um, preventing the uh, hemostasis, the, the clotting process from extending anywhere beyond the, the, the site where it's needed at the site of injury. And th they can really be divided into, into two broad categories anticoagulants. Um, the first one is the, uh, the vessel war factors. Vessel war. Uh, and I'm going to break these down into a few, into a few different ones which I'll, I'll describe in a bit more detail uh, shortly. Um, the starting point is the smoothness of the uh, of the of the vessel wall itself. Um, there's something called the glycocalyx. And there's um there's also something called um thrombomodulin. Which is a specific membrane bound protein that has a, a an important anticoagulant effect. Uh, and linked to thrombo, uh, thrombomodulin is um, something called protein C. Uh, which has, a, has an important uh, anticoagulant effect. Finally, um, also linked to, to the vessel wall, is, is something called tissue factor pathway inhibitor. I won't spell it all out, just to give it its, its acronym. Um, which unsurprisingly has its effect on, on uh, inhibiting uh, tissue factor. So that's the, the first sort of broad category of, um, of anticoagulants. Uh, the second one is, um, is linked to uh, blood products itself. So, to products in, in the blood. Now, um, the first of these uh, that's important to mention is actually fibrin itself. Which has an important anticoagulant role. Uh, the second is an important molecule called antithrombin. And uh, finally, the one that's going to be important to, to uh, describe is the actual blood flow itself. And I'll come to those in a minute. So we'll start with the vessel wall factors. Uh, the first two very, very straightforward. Um, th the smoothness of the vessel wall itself is an important anticoagulant effect. Uh, prevents adherence and, and, and initiation of the intrinsic pathway. Uh, in a similar way to, to the glycocalyx, this is just a um, it's it's a layer of a, of muco it's a mucopolysaccharide layer that um, actually has an active role in, in, in repelling platelets and clotting factors. So in a similar way, prevents initiation of the coagulation cascade and the initiation of, of platelet function um, that, that we've talked about in, in, in the previous videos. Thrombomodulin, however, is, is a slightly more uh, uh, advanced, a slightly more um, complicated role. Uh, so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail now. So, thrombomodulin, what is it? It's a, uh, it's a molecule, it exists in the membranes of the uh, endothelial cells, uh, and it has two, uh, two important actions in uh, two anticoagulant, important anticoagulant properties. So, um, here's an example, here's a, here's a molecule here, uh, and its first action is, is linked to, um, it actually binds with thrombin. So this is a thrombin molecule here, uh, and it binds with this thrombomodulin uh, molecule, and and so it's taken out, uh, taken away from the circulation. As we, we can readily understand from discussing the coagulation cascade, thrombin is such an important molecule in the in the um, in the positive feedback and the amplification and and the coagulation cascade in general, that, that removal of thrombin from the circulation uh, is going to have a, an important anticoagulant effect. So that's its first, its first function. It um, removes thrombin. But it doesn't stop there. And its second, um, second role uh, is activation of protein C.
C. So just by the act of, of complexing um, with thrombomodulin, thrombin uh, allows activation uh, of a molecule called protein C. Um, and protein C itself has, has two important anticoagulant effects. So protein C. Its first effect um, is that it's actually uh, a, an enzyme. It has an enzyme effect on two important um, important uh, clotting factors. What it does is that it is able to destroy um, activated clotting factor 5 and activated clotting factor 8. If we remember back from the um, from the uh, the coagulation cascade, these are these are important uh, cofactors in the amplification process. Um, in case of five, or, um, uh, binding with um, activated factor ten, uh, and in the case of activated factor eight, binding with um, with uh, factor activated factor nine, um, to amplify the the whole cascade. So destroying these has an important anticoagulant effect. This process is, is augmented when when protein C binds with another another uh, anticoagulant protein called protein S. Now that's not protein C's um, only function because it also has a, uh, a an effect to, to actually uh, in, in, enhance uh, fibrinolysis which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, enhances fibrinolysis and we'll talk about fib fibrinolysis in a minute but basically this is the digestion of the fibrin that's been formed by the the clotting cascade so um, fibrinolysis is basically an anticoagulant effect um, that the protein C uh, plays a part in. The, the way it does this is um, inhibiting an inhibitor so um, we'll talk about it shortly uh, but there's a, a molecule called tissue plasminogen activator inhibitor we mentioned it briefly a minute ago uh, and protein C actually in, inhibits this so um, if you inhibit uh, the tissue plasminogen activator inhibitor you're enhancing tissue plasminogen activator which as we'll talk about in a minute plays a very important role in, in, in fibrinolysis and the breakdown of clots, uh, the breakdown of fibrin clots that have formed. Now the final endothelial factor that we want to discuss is um, TFPI which uh, if, you, if you remember right at the start is a is tissue factor pathway inhibitor. I mentioned briefly when we were describing the coagulation cascade that, um, that when tissue factor um, is, is produced um, from vessel wall trauma and it starts to produce the initial um, the initial components of a clotting cascade with with activated factor seven, um, it's actually removed from circulation um, by this this molecule here, uh, t tissue factor pathway inhibitor. It's it's produced by the endothelial cells and it's also present in it uh, in the plasma and in platelets uh, and is is released to actually remove tissue factor from from the circulation. Um, it, I mean, it also has an effect on activated factor ten and activated factor seven. Those those initial those initial molecules in the uh, extrinsic pathway and um, and it has an important role in that when the, the coagulation cascade is. Um, is, is going through the amplification process. It has to overcome this this negative effect, um, which it will be overcome if there's a significant injury um, that requires a, a clot to to be present. Otherwise, this will combat the uh, anticoagulant effect. Moving on to the the blood anticoagulant factors, uh, I'm going to start by uh, by talking about fibrin itself. Now during the, pro the, the process of, of creation of fibrin actually about 85 to 90 percent of, of thrombin is actually removed from the from the, um, the, the coagulation cascade uh, by adsorption to the fibrin filaments. So you know the actual creation of fibrin is, is almost a self-limiting step for, 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 the, for the coagulation cascade. In a similar way to that, that blood flow will remove activated clotting factors from the uh, 
the the peripheries of, of the clot if it's not if there's not a significant uh, corrugation cascade to to propagate clot formation uh, for instance where where there isn't significant um, vessel wall injury you know to the edges at the edges of the clot then the blood flow will, will is signif is signi significant enough to remove the activated clotting factors and prevent propagation of the uh, uh, propagation of the um, of the of the clot. So those two are sort of um, sort of self-limiting uh, factors of, of blood clot. Um, but antithrombin thrombins are a more slightly more complicated um, process. Um, it's actually also known as um, uh, uh, antithrombin heparin cofactor. And it works by actually inhibiting the, the proteases um, that are in the that are part of the coagulation cascade. Uh, thrombin being the most important, uh, and it works by um, by binding with them. So it binds with um, binds with thrombin. Um, the other ones it, it, it binds with the other activated proteases that that are very important. So activated factor nine, activated factor ten, activated factor eleven. And and activated factor 12. You remember they're all port important um, enzymes, important proteases of the um, of the coagulation cascade. So first it 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 it, it binds with thrombin uh, and it inhibits its effect on fibrinogen. So if you if you remember that the uh, the final step in the coagulation cascade is uh, where thrombin will convert uh, fibrinogen into uh, into a um, fibrin monomer uh, and so allow the creation of the fibrin chain but antithrombin when it binds with thrombin it actually prevents that happening secondly it it starts to remove thrombin from the circulation so it removes thrombin from the circulation um, after after a short while of it being bound to it, um, and like I said, it, it has this effect on, on removing the, these other uh, anti these other clotting factors as well. Now, it's important to know about this one in that it's this is is this action is is greatly potentiated by heparin. So um, heparin it's a, a well known anticoagulant, uh, and whilst it exists it does exist uh, physiologically it's produced by 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 mast cells and circulating basophils um it's it's, it's mainly it, um its main role is pharmacologically um and so it is given it is given to have this this effect this exact effect to augment the antithrombin effect on 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 binding and removing thrombin and these other activated clotting factors So a quick summary then of all our anticoagulants now. So firstly there's there's a number of vessel wall factors including the smoothness and the glycocalyx um, and tissue factor plasminogen, uh, tissue factor pathway inhibitor that uh, prevents um, prevent the actual uh, coagulation cascade getting started, prevents it getting um, getting enough um, clotting factors, activated clotting factors to start um, coagulation, start fibrin creation. And there's also um, thrombomodulin, thrombomodulin, which, which through its own action and through um, the a activating protein C, acts by by removing uh, thrombin, the, the the very important enzyme um, from the coagulation cascade. Uh, and in terms of protein C, also destroying some other important important cofactors. There's also the the uh, important blood uh, anticoagulants, um, fibrin and blood flow, both being natural. Um, uh, regulators to to the uh, the the positive feedback of the coagulation cascade, providing some of that negative feedback loop um, in terms of fibrin by removing thrombin, and in terms of blood flow by actually removing um, excess clotting factors. The antithrombin, like thrombomodulin, has a more specific role uh, in the case of antithrombin by binding and removing uh, both thrombin and some of the other um, proteases. Um, and in the case of antithrombin, this effect is greatly potentiated, uh, potentiated by heparin. 